Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day because it is a beautiful day here in Arizona. And, uh, a little chilly, but not too bad. So today I'm going to jump right into it. Today, as you can see over here, I have my mini shop set up. I put my pop up up. Got the Pioneer out there. I've got a drill press, some grinders on the ground, my little uh, Harbor Freight welding table, and my welder, as you can see. So what are we doing? Well, I'm assuming by the title of the video, you already know we are making A-frame gussets or braces, whatever you want to call them. And let me show you where we're going to do it and I'll explain to you why I'm going to do it. So if you come over here to your Pioneer and you look at your A-arm mounts, they're, they're in there. So if you notice, I did install a year ago actually on my um, Super ATV frame brace. Now, the reason I like that is it puts gussets or, or bracing on the inner and outer of the lower uh, A-arms and a nice thick piece of steel all the way across the bottom. My problem is, is there's nothing on the top. So when you look in here, you can see your A-arm mount and it's welded flat here and it's welded over. Now, there is this nice little gusset, I guess you could call it. Um, I think they cheaped out honestly instead of putting two separate ones and then it comes over here now It is welded on this side and this side of this back support But there's nothing here and if you look online, you'll see a few people have actually ripped this mount clear um, Of the frame toward the frame even so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount some flat stock here and here and make an L shape and then a gusset just to strengthen this up a little bit. Now, so the first thing I'm going to do to, for video purposes and to let my viewers see in there a little bit easier is I'm going to remove the stock bumper. And it's really easy to do if you haven't done it. If you've installed the winch, you've probably already done it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take the light off because it's wired in. But it's really easy. Those two bolts we're going to bolt to are right here. There's one bolt there and there's one bolt there and it's on the other side. So it's essentially eight bolts to get it out. And I got a couple more for the light. I'm gonna remove that just to show why I chose this position to do these braces. So let's go ahead and get started. So right here is where I'm gonna make the brace. I'm gonna go this AR mount bolt here to this piece right here. And for those of you wondering why, this piece here is where a lot of aftermarket bumpers bolt to, like the Super ATV, or there's a couple other ones where they have the winch that sits up here on the top for a high mounted winch if you don't want the lower one. Now usually those only hold like a 3,500 pound winch, or at least a Super ATV one does. So by going to here, it'll give you just a little bit more I guess lateral support. Because you remember, if you hit something with your tire, it's just, it's just a big lever. So you're just bending. And usually you're going in a forward more motion, which is just gonna bend this back. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my jack under my frame brace. I'm gonna lift it up, but I'm not gonna take the tires off the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these top air and bolts out. And let me show you what I'm gonna put in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these old welding coupons that I never used. And I'm going to drill some holes in my little drill press and I'm going to tack up basically an L bracket. Now, I hate welding on my machine, so I'm just gonna do a couple of tacks and I will have the ground actually touching this right here. I did get my calipers out. I think they're like eight bucks on Amazon, just so I can get everything going. Now, I could have bought some pre-made gussets, for like four bucks a piece, but I'm not gonna do it. I'll just use the scrap piece of this uh, coupon or something else to brace it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of metal, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to push it all the way back, make sure it's flush, and I'm just going to mark my hole centers. So now that I have my hole centers marked, I've got this flush on this side, my finger is to the bottom, and then I can measure. from this line down. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to that line. 
measure from that line to the center of the hole and it is 0.7 of an inch. Well, now that I've got my hole centers and it's 0.7 an inch down, I just basically drew it on here. What I'll do is I'll take my calipers and I'm going to measure the diameter of the bolts and go just a little bit over so I have a little bit of play, not too much, it'll tighten down. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the drill press and drill it out. We're gonna cut off the extra and start the tab on the other side. Okay, now I got it drilled gonna test fit it okay now that I've got it test fit on there where I want it I'm gonna cut this piece off right here and I'm going to do the same thing and basically put it up to right here okay. mark it I'm just gonna we'll cut right here to mark it and for those of you wondering it's about a half inch extra bolt so you're not hurting this, um, and it should be good on that one too. So my next step is to cut this piece and then remove that bolt, which means I need to jack this up. Okay, so I have it clamped here to the welding table, and there is the line. I am going to use just a cutoff wheel. Now if you notice on this grinder, I actually have two guards. This is a cutoff guard, so if the wheel comes apart, notice how it's got this bottom area right here. You also notice I got my uh, hearing protection. So make sure if you're gonna use a grinder, any power tools, um, I shouldn't have to tell you, use the appropriate safety methods. Um, I don't use gloves with grinders. That's my personal preference, but uh, be very careful. Eye, ear protection, uh, make sure no one's around and watch where your sparks are going. So let's go ahead and get this cut out. Okay, so I went ahead and I smoothed out this edge with a grinder, took a flapper wheel to it. So now, to remove the bolt, as you can see, from the upper A-arm, I'm gonna take the other half of this coupon and do the same thing, just like this. Now, I don't know if you can see in there, on the top, it's not a perfect 90 degrees, so I'm going to mark it, clean it up, and then put the bolt back in and I'm going to attack it. So let me go ahead and get this one drilled out. Okay, so the two pieces cut. Let me show you where I'm at. So right now, I have this piece snugged up there and this piece snugged up here. And there's a gap. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to cut. I've already traced the back side. I'll put it back on. As you can see, I've removed the A-arm. I am sitting on the jack below. I'm just going to tack up there and down there. But let me show you the back side. If you look, you can just barely see there's about one, one and a half threads coming out of the stock bolt. So now I'm going to pull it back out, cut it, bolt it back up, I'm gonna tack it. I'm also gonna make a gusset. I'll show you that here in a minute. So here's what I've got. I've got both those pieces just like that. Now, hindsight's 2020. I should not have rounded the bottom of this one. But what I'm gonna end up doing is taking a gusset and get it in here. And so I'm actually gonna put it on an angle so the water drips off of it. But if you notice on the bottom, there's a little bit of a lip on the A-arm tab so I can weld to the back side. The key is when you tack this in, you want to be able to get to your bolts. So next time, I'll probably make this bottom piece a little bit longer to go down to here on the other side. So let's go ahead and get this tacked up, and I'll get this piece tacked on. I don't want to weld too much on the vehicle. If you look here, I put my ground right there on the metal. So I'm just going to tack it real easy.
and there's that. Then I'm going to take my gusset and do the same thing. So now that I got tacked up, I'm going to take this off, put it on the table, and uh, weld it up. The reason I tacked the gusset in there is I, I didn't want the uh, L shape to bend out of shape so that all the holes line up. So I've taken the bracket off the buggy. Like I said, I don't like welding on the buggy. Um, that's why I clamped my ground right to the bracket so that the uh, when you weld, it, you know, it's a positive, it's a negative. You're using electrical current at the shortest distance. It was already on the metal. But here's where we're at. So this is how it's going to sit. Um, this is on the front bumper. This is the A-arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead here. Um, I may do a whole bead or a half bead. I don't know. But I do want to do one right down here on the bottom here. And then something up here and over here. And then I will obviously go up the corner. The key is you can see where the bolt is. So you have to make sure that you can get a ratchet or wrench, something in there. And this metal here is thicker than the current frame, or at least as thick. So I'm gonna get that welded. And here we go. Um, it is still, I guess it's not too warm. So I did go in and wet it down. I will take a grinder and just smooth these edges over, kind of like I did up here. Um, I got a little hot back there, as you can see. So I need to double check the fit. Then I will get it painted and we will put it on. So there's bracket number one. All right, so I got some black duplicate color uh, rust barrier it's just a black paint for bare metal and whatnot i have cleaned this up with some parts cleaner give you guys a closer look it's my favorite tree to paint on as long as my wife's not here to yell at me didn't do too bad so put a couple coats of this i'll let that dry put one or two more coats on there while that's happening i'm gonna get started on the other side so i can get my pioneer back together and out riding it well it's been about 45 minutes after i spray painted the bracket so this is what it looks like my final product yeah it's not perfect but i'm also not selling it so this will mount to this side the other one is over here on the uh painting tree i guess you can call it and it is different as you can see but very similar but let's go ahead and let's get this bolted up and it's going to be pretty simple just in reverse order i take my bracket with my bolt get this started now I'm not going to torque this top A-arm bolt down until the uh, Pioneer is on the ground but I will go ahead and snug it up just a little bit so that put the weight back on it Take these. Get them started. I'm not going to snug it up yet. So this is our final product and the light should be a little bit better as you can see this bracket here is welded there and it is welded on the bottom and now this will have these bolts here in this and once I get it back on the ground with the weight on it I will torque this down so let me go ahead and do that. There you have it all is done I got everything uh, buttoned back up I got the top A-iron bolts torqued back down to spec so let me give you a quick walk around of what it looks like. So if you notice, I have not put that bumper back on because, boom, I'm going to put that one on. So I'm not even going to put this on. I ordered this, 
it finally came in so tune in for next week's video to see what i ended up ordering and if you're curious there's a barcode there so i did end up taking the shocks off to uh, get everything aligned and i did get this re-greased before i tighten down the bolts but there you go um, I don't want to say it looks factory because it's shinier, but I would say it looks pretty good. Um, it's at least as thick as the factory metal, if not a little bit thicker. So it'll definitely help this A arm from tearing um, if I were to hit something heavy. Um, you know, I'd rather have a feasible link of a tie rod or the A arm versus the frame. That's me. And then, you know, you have this factory mount back there. So let me show the other side. The other side did come out just a little bit different. And that is because, well, I couldn't get this corner cleaned up. That's some anti-season there. But uh, again, they're, just, they're custom made. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you go ahead and do something yourself. Well, it's making brackets or whatever. Work with your hands, start wrenching. It's fun, and you know, for me, it's therapeutic. Tune in next week to see the new bumper install. So don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Yeah, real quick, click that subscribe button. You know, ask your friends, help me out a little bit. And until next time.